after a few um, exact solutions of the 1D Ising model, uh, let me get back to mean field theory again uh, in order to finish up some pending work, uh, which is essentially you know uh, the Landau's theory uh, of phase transitions. So, to getting at that, uh, we need to get back to the mean field theory. And uh, we will uh, talk about the magnetization, which we have already talked about, we just uh, remind you of the essential results. And uh, we here we will talk about the susceptibility and the free energy. And this free energy will be written in terms of the order parameter of the system, which uh, here is the magnetization. And uh, then uh, we will derive uh, a free energy functional in terms of uh, orders or ra rather powers of the uh, order parameter which is magnetization here and um, that is where we will end this discussion on the Ising model. And uh, just to remind you that we have done uh, this transfer matrix which is an exact uh, solution of this uh, of this uh, Ising model and also have done um, uh, the renormalization group and uh, these are uh, really nice solutions that uh, gives us results that are intuitive and um, they are uh, they are quite correct uh, in terms of uh, qualitative nature of them. Uh, mean field theory on the other hand is uh, true uh, or rather it can be done in any dimension. Uh, however, uh, we know that in one dimension uh, we get wrong results. However, in two and three dimensions uh, or rather greater than one dimension we get uh, qualitatively nice or rather uh, correct results and uh, which are important. So, uh, we get back to the uh, mean field theory where we have uh, derived that the, uh, this is also called as a Bragg Williams approximation. So, we will write down the magnetization uh, and this magnetization has this form. Uh, so, m is equal to tan hyperbolic uh, beta and well let me use another bracket here and it is a h plus uh, z j m uh, and uh, this h is the external field, uh, z is the coordination number which means that uh, in fact the dimensionality really enters through this number then z equal to 2 in one dimension equal to 4 in two dimension and 6 in uh, three dimensions. J is of course, the Ising uh, interaction strength or it can also be called as a uh, Ising parameter or basically the nearest neighbor spin exchange term and uh, this M is of course, the magnetization. So, uh, you see that this uh, is really a transcendental equation because what you want to solve is there in the left as well as in the right and we have uh, done this solution and uh, what we have also seen that the critical properties uh, of this magnetization or rather how exactly it behaves uh, at temperature very close to T c. Uh, to remind you this beta equal to the inverse temperature which is 1 over k t and um, in order to do that what we did was that uh, this we took it as uh, 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 h effective and uh, then uh, we have done a, a expansion of tan hyperbolic x uh, and which gives you uh, x where x is equal to h effective here which is nothing but uh, it is equal to x minus x cube by 3 uh, plus of the order of x terms which are of the order of x to the power 5 and, and higher than that which we have neglected and uh, we have uh, kept only uh, terms up to uh, cubic in x and that gave us this expression for magnetization as uh, beta z j m minus one third beta z j m whole cube. That is x minus x cube by 3. So, this is the uh, magnetization expression for, uh, for T uh, just below the transition temperature and this is of course, equal to 0 at uh, T greater than T c. Uh, so, for T greater than T c plus 
uh, and uh, then we have uh, actually calculated um, this m to be equal to um, uh, or rather uh, this equation if you gather everything or m on one side then what you get is that tc over t minus 1 whole uh, one third uh, tc over t uh, whole cube m square and this is equal to 0. Uh, this is for this limit where this m is non-zero because m is 0 it does not make sense. So, it is uh, t uh, equal to tc minus or t going to tc minus and um, this equation has to be solved in order to get m um, as uh, a function of t for the temperature to be very close to tc but approaching tc from below. Uh, and uh, just to remind you that tc is equal to zj uh, over k uh, the Boltzmann constant where z is the, uh, the number of uh, nearest neighbors which is called as a coordination number and uh, j is the, uh, the Ising interaction strength. So, if you solve this then m becomes equal to plus minus root over uh, 3 uh, t over t c uh, square and t c minus t divided by t c uh, and this is a form for uh, for m that is close to t c approaching it from below. And if you introduce a reduced temperature t, so this is called as a reduced temperature. So, this is equal to T minus T c over T c and uh, then uh, m becomes equal to a plus minus root over minus 3 1 plus T whole square into T. So, here of course, uh, we know that T is uh, weakly negative because we have temperature which are uh, slightly lower than T c. So, with this uh, if you use a binomial expansion of this thing inside. So, it is a 1 plus t whole square if you use a 1 plus um, 2 t and neglect all other terms. So, then it becomes um, simply. Uh, so, this is of course, uh, valid for t to be much much smaller than 1. So, m becomes equal to uh, plus minus root over a minus 3 uh, 1 plus 2 t um, into t which is nothing but equal to minus of 3 t. Okay. Uh, so, this t is the reduced temperature and uh, uh, we are getting uh, a negative sign inside the square root, but there is nothing to worry because t the small t itself is negative and that is the, uh, the property or rather that is what uh, the magnetization is. Uh, if you approach uh, in terms of temperature, if you approach T c uh, from below. Okay. So, that is the uh, critical property. So, you one can write it as m t uh, and uh, really we are talking about 0 field. So, this is equal to a plus minus a 3 uh, t. Um, to the power half um, for uh, t less than I mean t tending to t c minus h c equal to 0 for uh, t tending to t c plus. The, so, the if you are approaching it from above then it is equal to 0 and uh, this result of course, uh, is very wrong in uh, one dimension because we are talking about the external field to be equal to 0 and still we are getting a magnetization and which we should not be there should not be any ordering uh, in one dimension uh, only in two and three dimensions there uh, would be ordering. So, but uh, in this uh, simple result that we have obtained uh, is qualitatively correct in uh, two and three dimensions that is a remarkable fact. Okay. So, let me uh, now do the, uh, the other thing which is called as a susceptibility. which is a response uh, rather a linear response of the system uh, as a magnetic field is put in. And uh, let us talk about the isothermal susceptibility and uh, uh, so we just do it at a given temperature and this is defined as uh, del m 
del H um, at a constant temperature. Okay. And uh, now, if you uh, look at this expression that we have written earlier, this uh, expression that is on the top of the slide and take a derivative with respect to H and uh, then we uh, get this chi of T is equal to 1 divided by cos hyperbolic square um, beta uh, H plus Z J M and a beta 1 plus Z uh, chi of T. So, that is the expression that we get and uh, again uh, we have to gather uh, this susceptibility chi of T um, on one side and then uh, one gets chi of T at uh, T H is equal to some beta divided by uh, cosine hyperbolic square uh, beta H plus Z J M and minus beta Z J. So, this is uh, this is the form of the susceptibility at uh, constant temperature. So, explore the behavior for H equal to 0 that is the external magnetic field equal to 0. So, chi T now it is a function of T and 0. Uh, this is equal to um, this beta divided by uh, cosine hyperbolic square and a beta um, Z J M and uh, minus beta Z J. Okay. That is a simple expression that we have. So, this is for the susceptibility. Now, uh, let us uh, do the same analysis as we have done it for the magnetization that is we want to see it how it behaves uh, for T close to TC uh, as we approach uh, TC from both below and above. Okay. Uh, magnetization uh, is 0 above TC does not mean that the susceptibility will also be 0 above TC we will see that just in a while. So, um, for now for T uh, equal to T C plus or as we were writing it with a uh, tending to sign. So, T C plus uh, we have m equal to 0. So, uh, chi at T C plus uh, for the 0 field is equal to beta divided by 1 minus beta z j and uh, this is again uh, equal to k T minus T C um, reminding you that T C is equal to Z J over K and this is nothing but equal to 1 over K T C um, and a 1 over T, T is the reduced temperature. So, this is the form for the susceptibility which is uh, above the critical temperature or the ordering temperature and uh, if you uh, if you take it uh, for T c uh, minus that is below T c basically very close to T c we know that the behavior of m is that it is equal to plus minus root over of 3 uh, 3 of uh, this 3 mod T uh, which we have found earlier. And then we can use this expression that cosine hyperbolic x is equal to 1 plus x square by 2. Uh, plus order x to the power 4 uh, you know where it comes from because uh, this cos hyperbolic x is equal to e to the power x plus e to the power minus x by 2 and then for small x you write exponential of x is x 1 plus x square by 2 and so on and uh, then you can just uh, add all of them and then you get this. Uh, so, this is the cosine hyperbolic x. So, um, around x equal to 0 that is small x, uh, we get the chi of T at T c minus uh, 0 is equal to this beta divided by um, 1 plus half uh, beta z j and then we have a 3 uh, t um, whole to the power um, 3 t. So, sorry 3 into t whole to the power half. Um, and that is your, um, uh, so there is a 
a bracket here and there is a square here and then there is a square here as well and a minus beta z j. Okay. So, this is the expression for uh, the susceptibility at temperatures um, close to T c, but approaching it from below. So, if you uh, make a simplification, pardon me, simplification of this one gets that beta uh, 1 plus 3 uh, beta uh, z j uh, square into this reduced temperature minus beta z j. Um, and uh, this is nothing but equal to half 1 over k t c uh, again using t c equal to z j by k uh, this becomes 1 over t. Okay. So, uh, it is interesting that uh, it goes as 1 by uh, mod of t uh, for a temperature greater than t c as well as uh, temperature less than t c though with uh, uh, this uh, coefficient to be uh, exactly half of what it was uh, for t greater than t c uh, in this in this particular case. So, we sort of take these results and uh, we say that t uh, 0 this is equal to some uh, coefficient uh, uh, say uh, let us call it some alpha over t uh, for t T c minus and uh, this is equal to um, twice of alpha over T for T equal to T c plus where alpha is equal to uh, 1 by 2 K T c. Okay. So, if you plot them then of course, uh, what we get is that that we uh, see that the susceptibility as a function of uh, um, temperature it has a behavior uh, we will have to be a little careful because they have different coefficients otherwise this uh, uh, the behavior is somewhat same. So, uh, this is for t uh, greater than t c the right hand side is for t greater than t c and the left hand side is for t less than t c and this is how the critical behavior of this uh, this susceptibility looks like. Okay. So, uh, having done the magnetization uh, analysis and the analysis of the magnetic susceptibility, uh, we can now uh, go into the free energy, the expressions for free energy and see that how it looks like. Uh, just a little bit of algebra, but uh, there is nothing much to worry. It is a simple algebra that uh, we are going to do here. So, uh, F um, and uh, let us write it uh, the mean field uh, free energy is equal to and we will write it for h equal to 0. So, this is equal to minus k t um, log of z um, m f. Okay. And uh, to remind you the z of m f which we have derived earlier is exponential minus beta j z um, uh, n uh, m square and uh, 2 cosine hyperbolic beta h effective whole to the power n this for n uh, spins and h effective just to remind you that it is equal to h plus z j m and uh, H is the external field. So, this uh, H effective is the effective external field which takes into account that this um, coordination number and all that. Okay. So, so we want to calculate uh, that at 0 field what happens to the free energy and in order to do that uh, let me write this expression down. So, this is n uh, z j m square over 2 and uh, minus n k t log of 2 uh, and minus n k t uh, log of uh, cosine hyperbolic uh, beta h effective. Okay. So, that is the expression that we have. Now, what we do is that uh, we will uh, expand this 
in order to write this free energy as powers of this magnetization that we have obtained. Okay? And uh, in order to do that, let me uh, sort of give you uh, without a proof uh, the log of this cosine hyperbolic x. This can be written as a slightly complicated expression, but uh, not that we need everything about it. So, we have a minus 1 whole to the power n, 2 to the power 2 n minus 1 uh, and then there is a zeta function uh, 2 n and then we have uh, n pi to the power 2 n and x to the power 2 n. Uh, these the coefficients are uh, called as Bernoulli's coefficient anyway. Uh, but if you look at the first few terms, then this is equal to x square by 2 minus x 4 by 12 uh, plus x 6 by 45 and so on. And we really would uh, ignore these terms in order to write the free energy and so we write this as um, so uh, f uh, m f. So, this is equal to uh, n uh, z j m square over 2 minus n k t log 2 and minus n k t and um, what you have is the beta square uh, and z j m um, whole square divided by 2 that is the first term and the second term is beta to the power 4 z j m to the power 4 divided by uh, 12 and chopping it off here uh, not writing the, the other terms which are uh, x to the power 6 and x to the power 8. And um, if you do uh, if you introduce uh, this um, maybe just uh, doing a bit of uh, simplification would help. Uh, so, this is equal to n z j m square uh, by 2 and minus n k t log of 2 and uh, then you have a n uh, z j m square divided by 2 k t um, and uh, plus n uh, z there is a plus sign here and z j m whole to the power 4 divided by 12 uh, k t uh, to the power um, cube and so on. Okay. So, uh, and uh, introducing again uh, T c uh, which is uh, there is a T here which I forgot. So, n k t log 2 plus n k t c divided by 2 t and uh, t minus t c into m square and plus n k t c to the power 4 t cube um, and m to the power 4. Okay? So, that is the uh, expression for that. So, we have uh, been able to write this f m f in the powers of m square and m 4 and so on. And uh, so, we can write this that f m f for h equal to 0, we sort of bring back uh, the fact that h is we are doing it at h equal to 0 that is the external field equal to 0, it is equal to some f 0 uh, plus uh, a t minus t c m square plus a b m to the power 4. Okay? And you can keep uh, higher terms or other higher order uh, terms with m6 and m8 and so on, but uh, uh, this is good enough for us. And this f0 is just a constant term, it uh, really shifts the energy up or down uh, and it does not have any uh, sort of importance in the equilibrium state of the system. And uh, we can actually ignore this for the moment. So, ignore for now and uh, then uh, we can draw this, um, this is again for h equal to 0. So, we will just do this f m f 
this is just a sketch freehand drawing and we get a parabola for f m f as a function of m for t greater than t c and uh, you see that uh, there is no uh, magnetization here uh, m equal to 0 is the only solution for this problem ok and at t equal to t c we see that this parabola become like a like a cup ok. So, uh, pardon me for this uh, it is just a freehand drawing. So, it, it becomes like a with a broad uh, you know base and it is rising absolutely symmetrically that is what is demanded by the formula. And uh, the important thing is that that at t less than t c. So, this is at t equal to t c um, and uh, then uh, you know uh, sort of So, this is the, uh, so you get for T less than T c, you get a plus m, I mean this is minus m and this is a plus m. So, uh, the minimum of the free energy are obtained at two values which are symmetrically placed about m equal to 0. And uh, so, uh, basically if you uh, cool the system. Uh, below T c then uh, the uh, m equal to 0 solution uh, becomes uh, you know kind of metastable and uh, any any perturbation uh, that the system receives will push it down to either plus m or minus m with uh, you know equal probability. So, um, uh, now this uh, situation changes a little when you put in presence of a magnetic field. So, this is h equal to 0 and if you go to h not equal to 0 then the free energy actually picks up a term uh, which is h not equal to 0. So, uh, this is equal to f m f which is um, uh, f 0 minus h m plus a t minus t c m square plus some b m to the power 4 and so on. So, this uh, is the new term in presence of uh, h not equal to 0 and uh, accordingly this plots that we have presented in the last slide they get skewed in one side. So, this becomes like uh, it is like this it becomes asymmetric. So, this is f um, m f um, versus m. So, this is t greater than t c and uh, similarly for t equal to t c you will have. Uh, uh, so, the t less than t c we have uh, this thing becomes So, this is f m f versus m. So, this is skewed, but it has to minima one of them is of course, uh, deeper than the other. So, the system would like to be in this uh, in this region and for uh, this is for small h that is small magnetic field external magnetic field and if you increase the magnetic field then it becomes uh, pretty much like this ok. So, then of course, there is no other solution, but for the uh, the magnetization to be uh, in the direction of the field which is caused by this. So, this is for large h ok. And uh, importantly uh, we have written down a free energy expression in terms of uh, this. So, this free energy expression is written in terms of some constant term. Uh, let me ignore that uh, constant term let us write it as a and then there is a term which uh, depends on t and it goes as t minus t c and then there is this uh, this m square and then there is this c which goes as m to the power 4. Uh, so, this coefficient that depends upon t uh, this coefficient does not depend upon t one can write further terms, but the physics uh, is not uh, 
qualitatively changed if you uh, if you write further terms these are good enough for us to analyze this problem. So, if you go to this uh, these two plots. So, at h equal to 0 you do not have um, uh, t greater than t c there is no magnetization uh, at t equal to t c it becomes flat and at t less than t c there are magnetization at even at uh, h equal to 0. So, this result is uh, wrong in one dimension and uh, they could be uh, you know qualitatively correct in two and three dimensions and so on. And then if you put a magnetic field this uh, at t greater than t c you still do not have. Uh, so, this is really flat and so on. So, there is no uh, minima, but uh, uh, so there is no magnetization uh, because the free energy does not show uh, real minima um, at, uh, at a non-zero m. Uh, this is very shallow. Okay. Uh, the one that you have is that if you uh, if you put a uh, uh, so this is for t uh, less than t c and again this is for t less than t c. For t less than t c there is clearly a minima that is shown uh, which is equal to some uh, one of these m 0 which uh, in the direction of the field and uh, for large field of course, there is a unambiguous um, minima and so on. So, uh, this m equal to uh, m minus m 0 that uh, stop becoming a solution at large fields. Okay. So, that is uh, pretty much uh, you know what we do with the Ising model and it is uh, various solutions have been shown. We have shown the transfer matrix, we have shown the renormalization group and have convinced you that they give right results um, in 1 D and uh, qualitatively uh, I mean you cannot do a renormalization group in uh, in 2D, uh, but uh, uh, there are other solutions that are that are possible. And then uh, we have done a mean field theory earlier, and here this uh, analysis actually serves to give you two perspectives, or rather two point of views, and they are uh, what are the critical behavior, uh, critical behavior of the observables. That is, uh, how does the magnetization behave? Uh, below T c and above T c. Of course, above T c the magnetization is 0 um, in the absence of a field. And uh, so, we want to know that how it uh, uh, behaves for T close to T c either you approach it from below or you approach it from above. And the same we have done for uh, the susceptibility and the susceptibility is the response of the system that is how the magnetization changes as a, a magnetic field is being uh, or in presence of a small magnetic field. And then we have uh, calculated the free energy and uh, we were able to expand the free energy uh, by in terms of the order parameter which is magnetization here. And why is uh, the magnetization is the order parameter? We have uh, drawn this before. Uh, that uh, this uh, is really you know uh, we have this magnetization to have a form like this. We have also drawn it in the other side, but this m as a function of t behaves like this and this is the t c and this this how it behaves or rather um, uh, how it vanishes in the vicinity of t c is what we have shown. But uh, this magnetization is non-zero for t less than t c and magnetization vanishes at t greater than t c. So, magnetization is a marker of the phase transition or it indicates phase transition and that is why it is called as an order parameter. So, the free energy is expanded in terms of the order parameter and it is important uh, for one to note that there are only uh, I mean the even powers are only present. and. Um, uh, because odd powers would make it uh, you know uh, these terms to acquire a negative sign as m goes to minus m which in this case is not acceptable. Here m goes to minus m uh, the free energy does not change and uh, so this is the order parameter and we have been able to expand a free energy in terms of uh, these order parameters and uh, so uh, there is a very general uh, theory which is developed by Landau and it is called as a Landau's theory of phase transitions and uh, very well applicable in uh, superconductors and in magnets. And in a limited sense we have shown this uh, thing to arise uh, for the case of magnets. 
So, with this uh, we will end these uh, the discussion about an interacting model uh, a really simple interacting model, but have shown a number of uh, important facts and techniques about this model uh, which is known as the 1D Ising model. And of course, we have not done uh, much about uh, any exact solution uh, in larger than one dimension, but qualitatively this mean field theory gives you uh, results which are correct and intuitive in larger than one dimension. Of course, in one dimension it fails miserably. Okay. So, we shall stop here with that and continue with uh, uh, other topics, uh, newer topics uh, in the next discussion. Thank you. Thank you.